So first question, Jamie, as I ask everybody, give me a very short insight into your background and how you got started in kickboxing. Well, um, I got started. I was in my dad's gym. He had like a boxing gym and like different martial arts and stuff in. So I was I was four year old. He used to just use it as like a crash for me to go into and just keep us occupied. It was like free childcare from really. So I, uh, <coughs> I ended up having my first kickboxing fight when I was eight. And I sort of like just dabbled between that and football. And I did like a little bit of jiu and other martial arts and stuff like that till there. Uh, so I was like 18 or 19. And then I, I started kickboxing properly, like trying to like go to do professionally from there. But until then, it was kind of like, it was like a hobby that I took seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It's led us to, to where now, to glory. It led us to glory and led us to four and one in glory on a three fight win streak. And let's talk about your last fight, because I would argue that's your biggest victory. I don't know if you would agree with that or not, but that would be definitely my biggest victory. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I have said that once or twice and had someone disagree with me, and it's slightly awkward. <laughs> but no, 100% biggest victory, like by far. And looking back on the win over Gregorian a year ago, or just over a year ago since that fight, how do you look back on that? Phew. Uh. You know, everything was stacked against us. Like even John, when we're over there, he was saying, "Like fucking hell! Like you've got your back against the wall here. Like we're gonna have to go out and do it." And um, when that second round, when he when he knocked us out with that dodgy shot, and uh, I knew when I was coming to on the canvas, I was like, "I can just stay down here, get disqualification win. I still get me win bonus." And I was like, "I'll never be able to sleep at night." So then, like, I got up and that, like, getting up and winning the fight in the way I wanted, because I still took my school after that. And um, yeah. I don't know, it did, it did us a world of good, a load of favours. Yeah. But that, after that, I wanted the bigger fights and I haven't got them yet. And I have, I did get offered the title fight in December, but it, I literally, my physio told us I could start training that week. So it, it couldn't happen. Yeah. We'll get to that. Don't worry. Don't worry. We've got, I've got enough questions about, about the uh, the upcoming fights, but the second round in the in the Gregorian fight, as we know, uh, the referee called time and Gregorian hit you with a believer right hand. Was there anything? How hurt were you at that point? And was there anything in the back of your mind thinking, as you was, said, how how serious were them thoughts about not getting up? Oh, like uh, like I think that was just one of them fleeting thoughts that entered my head. It was one of those ones where I could have made the 10 count, but I think if I'd get up in the 10 seconds, he probably would have jumped on us and I would have gotten knocked down again after that. Because even when I got back up after having like a minute or so, my legs were like jelly. But yeah. it was, uh, I got hit and I knew I got hit and I like bounced off the ropes, but then my leg just went underneath. It was just one of those, those ones where you get dropped. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was, it was like serious, but it, it was nothing you couldn't come back from. Yeah, do you think perhaps more was made of it because of the late shot and such, do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But they made a big deal of it because he got knocked out in his previous fight, two fights before, with what he thought was an illegal blow, but it wasn't a legal blow. So the same way, we've just knocked him out with this one, it was an illegal blow. Why can't we get the win? Because it was a fucking dodgy shot. Yeah, yeah. And let's talk about the future, because that's to a certain extent, the reason why, why we're having this conversation tonight. Number four ranked in the world in glory, and we've got the upcoming title fight um, the end, at the end of the month against from Cedric Doombe and Myrtle Grunhart. Originally meant to fight in December, but Grunhart pulled, pulled out with an injury. What do you make of the controversy that's been going on about Grunhart's injury and Doombe kind of last-minute change of opponent out of seemingly nowhere? Uh, I don't know. Like fighters get injured, so I'm not. I'm not going to comment on Grown Hawk getting injured because he got in. He's going to fight him. Yeah, you know, he's fought before. He's beat him. I don't think it's as easy a fight as what Doombe thinks it's going to be. Like I definitely think Grown Hawk's got the beating of him. Although Doombe has been banging people out, but his last performance against that Kareem Gorge, who had no wins inside of Glory. Yeah. Um, and he was offered the Paul Daly fight as well, which he turned down in favour of Karim Gargi. I don't... It, it's a definite 50-50 fight. Yeah. But yeah. Doombe sells it well. 
to be fair to him. Yeah, he does actually, yeah. yeah. And that was another thing I did want to mention, the, the Paul Daly controversy, if you like, that's been going on on social media. I know you've trained with Paul Daly, and I know he's a, a fellow Englishman, uh, as, the, as we both are. What do you make of that, the fact that Doom Bay has seemingly turned down the Daly fight? And how was, was there any contact from Glory for you to take the fight? So I was, um, I was surprised when I saw on Paul Daly's Instagram that he, he'd actually been offered the fight. He did have one fight for Glory years ago. I think it was like a crossover between Glory and Bellator back in the day. And uh, but like I get on with Paul. He's 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 a mint lad. He's 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 like he's taught us bits and bobs as well. So I was happy for him. And I, it's a nice fight if Doombeer gets beat. The super fight between them two would be brilliant. And then let me have the title fight <laughs> and just step aside. But they did. They offered me the fight the week before the fight. And I've been injured. I've been out for like eleven or twelve weeks. I've been injured all year, pretty much. Different yeah. injuries, COVID, all the rest of it. So, like, I, I couldn't have took the fight on a week's notice. Like, I wouldn't have done myself justice. If I could have done the rounds, I would have took the fight in a heartbeat because you've got to take opportunities. But I wouldn't have even been fit enough to do the five rounds, never mind do the fight. Yeah, yeah. And then there's all the elements of yeah, fighters don't very often get a second go at the title if it's a poor performance. And as you say... Especially on a week's notice, if you make sure of yourself, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's all them things about I'm, I'm not... Not saying this specifically for you, but your cardio isn't up there, and your gas goes, and then before you know it's you don't you've just beat Gregorian, and then all that hard work seemingly is is all for nothing. Uh, anyway. I don't think any of my coaching team would have let us go ahead with it anyway. Do you not think? No, I mean after I got offered that fight on the Friday, and I couldn't get a physio appointment with me. I mean, she says I could start punching from then, but she didn't say how. And I couldn't get a physio appointment for till after Christmas. And uh, I just said, fuck it. Like, I'll go down Liverpool and start training with John. And John says four weeks, he says, we'll be ready to go. He says, we'll fight any of them. And so, that would be my next question. What is the plan for your next fight? Do you want someone in the meantime between the title fight or do you want to, do you want the winner? I, I want Myrtle Grown Hart or Cedric Dubé next. I, I want one of those two next. I called them out in February. Obviously, circumstances meant that we couldn't do it in the summer. But I want Cedric Doombe on Myrtle Gronart next. I'm not asking for easy fights. I'm asking for the two toughest fights in the division. The champion at number one. And, Let's do it. You know what and I mean? Are they, when you say you want Grunhart or you want Doombe next, is that you want the winner of the title fight? Or seemingly, if would you, would you take the loser, being their name and, and such? I wouldn't be disappointed with either of them. Um, I think it makes sense if Doombe gets beat to fight Gronhardt for the title. But I, I want to fight Gronhardt because he was the K1 champ, he was glory champ. So that's more like a respect sort of thing. I want to fight Doombe because I know I can beat him. Like 100% I can beat him. I think he's a high trained and I think he gets well looked after by glory. So, I mean, they haven't looked after me that well. They've, they've given us like a kind of rough upbringing, but I, I honestly think I'll take him out. So that's why I want him. And in terms of the title fight that's going on at the end of the month, who do you favour in that matchup? I'd prefer to see Grown Art win, but I'd, I think Doom Bay will win. Do you? Do you think? I do. Uh, I, I do, but maybe Grown Art's got something going on. He's changed camps. Maybe he's changed his style a bit. But uh, sometimes he can be a bit wild, and if he gets caught in a slugfest with Doom Bay, I think you you get knocked out. Yeah. That is that is a, a real issue, isn't it? Yeah, Doom Bay has been on a bit of a nothing. He's going to win that fight. He's not going to take a backward step. I don't think either of them will take a backward step. He lets his ego go and he, he like he boxes him properly. Like he's got every chance of beating him. But if the clash in the middle, I think Doom Bay will knock him out. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a high likely high likelihood with with Doom Bay's knockout ability. Yeah. One last question, because of, actually, sorry, second to last question. Is there any? Um, for some reason, I think this is fair to say, Glory doesn't get, and kickboxing more generally, doesn't get the recognition it deserves, in my opinion. People just, it does not seem to attract the viewers or anything like that. Is that, is that fair to say, or am I, am I stepping Oh, 100%. Like, it doesn't, it's, they don't do themselves any favours in that regard, really, I wouldn't yeah. say. Yeah. Is the plan to move into any other combat sports, maybe ones that with better pay or more, or more viewership or anything like that, or are you happy in the kickboxing realm? You see, I think I'm 
I'm in the kickboxing world now because I didn't even think I would throw a punch again when I was like, I was between the ages of 19 to 22, 23. I had like, I had three surgeries on my shoulders and uh, like, I just, I thought it was over and done with then. And uh, the, like, I've done bits of jujitsu and stuff in the past. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to grapple. Or just, I don't have the confidence to grapple in my head with the way my shoulders are. In boxing, um, I did switch to pro boxing for a while. And uh, I had a fight. And I, saw, I sold a bunch of tickets for it in the next fight. I think I was like, I'd sold me quarter of tickets plus another 30 or 40. And then they wanted another 30 or 40 on top of that in the like, next two weeks to fight another journeyman. And I was like, I'm not like ripping me friends off to go away and fight journeyman. And I, I think I've come too far to fight journeyman. Yeah. If I get offered the right fights in boxing, see if I get the glory title and I get offered some nice fights down the line. I would do, but the British Boxing Board took me license anyway when I took a kickboxing fight. Yeah. So it's so the goal, as I'm sure, with any any fighter, especially a number four ranked fighter in the world, is that world titling. In oh, glory the world suffering. title. You, there's a glory, there's there's one championship, you know, there's plenty of options out there. But I, yeah. I would I would absolutely love a 10 round boxing match eventually. You know, I've, I've loved boxing ever since I was a kid. I, like, I'm more of a boxer than a kickboxer. I kickbox because I can get paid doing it. I can't get paid doing anything else. I love kickboxing, but I, I would love a 10 round boxing fight eventually. If it, if, is there someone that you would like to, to box around your division, around your weight? Oh, I'd love to box Chris Eubank Jr. I would absolutely love to punch his face in. <laughs> like, he's just got one of them heads. And I just think, I think he's another one who got brought up really well. And then he yeah. got found out against Billy Joe, and then he got found out against George Groves. So he's the one, but super middle, I don't know if I could do. Maybe he's light heavy. But then when I, you watch light heavyweight division these days, the, in terms of the British standard, it's like, fucking hell, man. Mm. It's not what it was 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah. It it's seems to like... Be... I would... No, go on, sorry. Go ahead. No, go you, on. You... <laughs> I, I, was... I, I was going to say, like... When I was boxing, that was always my goal to get like the, the light heavy British title. And I was looking, I was like, this might be quite hard to do. And I was looking at the top three and I was like, there's nothing there. Yeah. And it was Lyndon Arthur, there was that, um, what's his name, who he fought last? Anthony Yard, who fought 19 pure dings before he got <laughs> took the school off Kovalev. And it was like, I never got that upbringing, I never got the, the journey when I always had tough fights coming through. So I would, I'd, I'd love to box any of them ten rounds, or just, just to have a nice fight. It's, it's amazing. I always think like I cover all combat sports, I cover boxing, kickboxing, and mixed martial arts, and it's amazing like the disparity I always think between boxing and kickboxing and mixed martial arts because in I know you have seven losses in your pro kickboxing career. In boxing, that would be like you would be chastised. Game over. Or, yeah, chastised with seven losses. Seven losses. Your you're fighting the next Ryan Garcia or someone like that and just expecting to, to fall over. It's it's a funny a disparity, isn't it? If you get beaten boxing, your next fight, you're not going to get beat. Yeah. You, they're going to give you somebody you're going to beat. Yeah. Like, the kid I fought my boxing debut, I got in the group text of the lads the next day, they were like, what the fuck were you fighting him for? They were saying, like, he turns up to win. And I was like, fucking course. What do I want to fight somebody who's going to roll over and let us beat them for? Yeah, they were like shocked. I was fighting like a, an opponent who turns up to win. It's yeah. like how, oh, man? Like it's it's beyond my thinking. It's not a fight. It's it's business. But I was never yeah. the businessman with boxing. So the the example my I would give, I will give for for the pro, one of the problems with boxing for me is when Mikey Garcia fought Errol Spence. Mikey Garcia was thirty nine and oh, he was a four weight world champion. And he fights Errol Spence and gets, quite frankly, dominated. And Errol Spence showed how good he was that night. But instantly, it's Mikey Garcia's got one less, one loss on his record. And he's all of a sudden not rated. And it was just like, why why can't we rate, why can't we rate people who, are, who have a loss or two? It, it's ridiculous. You look at, like, and I think it's more of a recent thing as well. I wouldn't say, like, recent, maybe in the last 10 or 15 years. Because you look at, like... Some fighters who went down as legends, like Irish Mickey Ward and people like that, who had losses on the career and are still recognised as being 
top flight boxes. But nowadays the O counts for every. It's marketable. It's business. It's profitable, and it's your O means you're the top boy. But then they're getting brought up by fighting absolute donuts. Yeah. Like guys with 120 losses who probably can't box, they just don't want to win. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing as well. Like you look at a highly touted prospect, I'm not going to name names, but then you maybe go on Brock Box Rec or something like that and look at the records of their opponents and they might have 100 <laughs> wins between them and 5,000 losses. And you're like, why are we doing this? Oh, man. Like that's that's what I started off with boxing. I was like looking at who I was going to be fighting. And then like, I even looked at the top guys like Anthony Yard and stuff. And I was looking at like his list of opponents. I was like, oh, my God. Fucking hell. Mm. I couldn't get out of bed to fight them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you know, one day, in my second ever boxing fight, I'll fight any of them. If it ever gets to that point. If it ever gets to that point. So that's the plan. Glory world title and then a big domestic fighting at light at the light heavyweight boxing division. Ah, like win or lose, just a, just a nice fight, just a nice show. I've always loved boxing. It was what I brought brought up with. It's something I would like to go out on. Is that is that is that true? Is it yeah? That's something you'd like to go out on. No, I'd probably say um, I do what I can doing the uh, competitively with glory or even if I went like over to one or whatever that kind of thing that I would I would definitely like to have a little blast at the bare knuckle scene but like I see a small blast because you uh, that's not good for your hands it's not good not good for anything Jamie to be honest not good for your hands not, not good but it's uh, I think it's a, it, it, it's just something I would like to do two or three of them if I didn't get off with a decent boxing fight Okay, brilliant. And one word you mentioned there, which I wanted to pick up on, was upbringing. I know your dad has a very big role in your career, both coach, yeah. and I believe he does a lot of cornering for your fights as well. How much of an how much of a benefit is that for you personally? It, it's a good benefit because you got someone to fall back on. You got someone to talk about with things, you know. And um, like he's always always plays a, a big role. And it, I think this is a thing, especially in kickboxing Muay Thai, where there isn't like with your boxing clubs, you've always got that coach who's there all the time. I think when you get to a certain level within like the kickboxing Muay Thai world, you kind of don't have that person to fall back on. Like you, you find you see a lot of tra- fighters training themselves for fights eventually as they go on, because the money's not there, they've probably got their own clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. So I've been lucky enough to always have him to fall back on, you know. Yeah. And I've, I've got, like, other lads up here who, who I train with, and then, obviously, John at Liverpool, he he's pretty much in control of what I do now. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to have those people around us. I'd, I'd be screwed without them. Quite quite a nice balance, I suppose, between coming down and getting the, the expert work up in Liverpool and then, and then the guys back home, notably your dad as well. Uh, I like the lads back home to go above and beyond for us, but John, when he's down there, like he, he's always on the phone. He keeps you going. He's 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 in it for the love of the sport, you know, for the love of fighting. So, and we've said we want to be the first ever British team because nobody ever won the K1 World Title from Britain, and nobody's won the Glory World Title. So the, to be like the first ever team to get the the World Title from Britain, you know, oh. that'd be something. That would be a that would definitely be put your name in the history books. Uh that's 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 my goal this year. And speaking about this year, this will be my final question. We've got the opponents, we've got everything about that. But time frame wise, when do you want to get back in the ring? And end of February, start of March. End of February, start of March. I, like I say, I just started training two weeks before Christmas. Been out for that long. I, I hurt me knuckle in a, it when I fought Gregorian. And I didn't realise how bad it was, and then the lockdown happened, so I just thought, oh, I rested. But it actually it took quite a bit of a... I, I spent a fortune getting that fixed. And then I think I was punching wrong with it because I was compromised with that knuckle, so I hurt my shoulder. So then I spent a few... where well, I spent another few grand fixing my shoulder, and I'm just back to normal now before I start blowing the rest of my fight purse, what I've got left over from that last fight. So definitely end of February, start of March. And obviously, you say that, but that, but if we're talking about the right opponent, that would be dependent on how that fight plays out, wouldn't it? If that's a five, five round, 
back and forth war in which both fighters are, are sidelined for a good for maybe till the end of the year and that that power. You don't get sidelined with glory. You just get put back in. Oh, do you? Is that correct? There's no warm up fights. There's no. There's no nothing like that. You can come in and just get put in where like. This is examples of like Pat Barry getting put in with Zach McQuester and getting knocked out in his first fight. You know, they give Muhammad Jariah, who came from Infusion to Myrtle Groenhart, and he got knocked out in his first fight. There's no there's no love for the fighters. You just get put in. So I'd imagine whatever they want to do will, will happen after. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you for coming on. It was an absolute honour, and we look forward to your next fight. How can people find you on social media? Yeah, the best way to find us is on Instagram. Oh, it's Jamie Bates underscore 89. Brilliant. And before we finish, Jamie, is there anything you'd like to say? No, just thanks a lot for having us on. I appreciate your time. I, I appreciate your time too, my friend. It was an honour.